Hello, this is Civil Fallout, also known as Jamsack, or however you may know me, in whichever way I infect your life. Now, this is basically going to be a, the first episode of my new series of why you should or shouldn't join blank. Um, basically, I'm going to be doing each faction of, each of the Fallout series, as many as I possibly can, and basically analyse the falls and against, and a little bit backstory as to why you should or should not join the faction. I originally started this off as an Instagram post, but then decided to actually make a bit more sense, or to elaborate the posts a bit more in a small video. Hopefully not too long, but I'm going to kind of go through each point, and kind of elaborate them a bit more thoroughly, and hopefully you can understand really where I'm coming from, and hopefully you can actually get a bit of insight why people do like, or why they may dislike, your favourite factions. Now, today's episode, I'm going to say today's episode, but I don't like saying it like that. So, this episode will cover the Enclaves. Now, what you might gather from this over time is that I'm running it in the order that I actually made the Instagram posts. So, we're going to have Enclave, East Coast Brotherhood, and so forth. So, the, basically, we're going to start off with the fours. And my first four points I'm making is going to be that the Enclave are technologically advanced. And my little brackety notes was... The, they're the only faction to develop new variations of power armor. Now let me expand upon that a little bit. The Enclave, this, this probably requires a bit of the backstory first of all. The Enclave are essentially what's left of the pre-war government. They're actually one of the only factions that actually have remnants, or well, not remnants, but descendants from the administration of pre-war government as well as the military as well. Which just gives a lot of insight and also a lot of um, knowledge which was left over including the Vertibird Blueprints, all the way to even the X01 power armor blueprints and things like that, which allowed them to mass produce the power armor for their use. Now, when I say they're the only faction to create their own power armor, they're actually the only they actually developed offshoots of the armor, so the Hellfire, the Tesla. So they actually created more armor than the blueprints initially had, and they're the only faction to further develop their own technology and to that extent, in my opinion, after in the post-war world. The Brotherhood created the Pridwin. But in my opinion, I personally feel that that's taking scraps of other technology and putting them together. And they, that was already created um, years before by the uh, by the Midwestern Brotherhood. So, at this extent, this is not trying to put digs, it's just trying to put comparative points together to kind of put my argument forward. Now, a further history into the Enclave is, we first met them in Fallout 2. They were kind of assholes back then. They basically helped create the Intelligent Death Clause, and they also... Um, kind of engineered the mutation of Frank Horrigan and actually created a mutant which was in power armor but also obedient at the same time and has some relatively low intelligence but enough to basically obey orders and kind of basically to communicate with people. Now at the Fallout, in Fallout 2 they attempted to use this um, modified FEV which could basically kill anything that has been infected by radiation or other um, toxins and they were going to test it upon Wastelanders and basically some Vault residents. Um, which is the, basically the vault, um, the vault Dweller came from. And then his son is his tribe. You go to the place, you kill Frank Corrigan, the um, Oriel Rig gets blown up. Which is one of their main bases. Now what we find from that in Fallout 3 is that the officer shoots of what was left of that. Or some of the people split up before then. Under the guidance of... Um, Basically, Autumn, I believe it was Autumn Senior and his son Autumn Junior. Autumn Senior eventually split off into his own way, but Autumn Junior eventually led Autumn as Colonel Autumn in Fallout 3, led the Enclave's et effort in the capital wasteland in order to set dominance there. Now, what we realised by that point is the fact that eventually they did obviously fail, and then at Navarro they lost another significant base, and they also lost um, at Adams Air Force Base as well, which was just another significant defeat. And it seems that by the times of New Vegas, even pushing to Fallout 4, they had basically been obliterated from the wasteland, and there's not really much mention of them. It is mentioned by the Grand Zealot Richter um, in the Bar Harbor DLC that he is part of the Enclave, but they're no longer the force they once were, to the fact that they're no longer around, um, which suggests that he... I've, Either they're not really around anymore, or he simply doesn't have any knowledge of them. Um, with mention of them in Chicago, it could be possible they're around, but it's just, in my opinion, it's a tough one to tell. Now, continuing my previous point, they're the only fa they're the only faction, as I said, to develop their own power armor, their own variations of it. But in addition, they were actually able to mass produce the power armor, which I believe is hinted that the Fallout 4 Brotherhood was able to do, but nothing to the extent that the Enclave could. They had the means to actually create mass amounts of power armor, and they knew how to use this technology to the full extent, which is something the NCR have never been able to do, and the Legion refused to do. So what we see is that the Enclave almost has an advanced knowledge of not only how to create this tech, but also how to use it. 
In addition to this, we realised that the Enclave use plasma, which is arguably more advanced than laser technology, but that is something to be debated. Um, and they also happen to make use of, in my theory, far greater technology, which is also seen as the orbital missile strikes, which we saw in Fallout 3 and Broken Steel DLC. So these are just a couple of examples about how the Enclave are incredibly technologically advanced. Just go straight to the next four. So I put determined, and they keep fighting with everything they have. Now the reason why I say that is because the Enclave actually, despite their heavy losses in Fallout 2, and despite their heavy losses in Fallout 3, they still continue by the time of New Vegas. The actual events between Fallout 3 and New Vegas, no, between Fallout 2 and New Vegas, were basically looking at about 30 plus years. And between basically the events of Fallout 2 and gradually on to Fallout New Vegas. Now what makes that significant is we basically can see how within that period, the, actually the Enclave, despite being hit several times and still being fought by c coalition between the Brotherhood and the NCR, we still saw about how they have good organisation skills in terms of a functioning form of government. Now, again, they are descendants of the pre-war government, and therefore they actually have the know-how and still the notes and everything they need to actually run a government, which is actually Colonel Walter's intentions in Fallout 3, which is something not many players actually remember. Now, in addition to this, they are also very adept to what they're doing. They've been in the capital waste no, they've been in the wastelands for a long time, and as a result, they have the know how to do a lot of things. And they've basically been fighting for a very long time. Now what we see by the times of um Fallout three and four is that they start to wane and they no longer have the strength they once had. Which is why the next thing I go on to the against and why people may or may not or the reason why they may not join the Enclave. So now we're going to talk about the against of joining the Enclave. Now my first major point, which I think is probably the biggest point you can make about them, is the fact that they're ideologically obsessed, to the point of being self-detrimental. Now, compared to the East Coast Brotherhood, they're not very pragmatic in terms of ideology. As a result, what we see in the Enclave is a faction that is not able to adapt its views in order to survive within the wasteland. What we saw, however, in the New Vegas Remnants, though, was actually a group, a splinter cell of what was left, who were actually willing to change their views in order to survive which is almost something the larger faction should have considered and they should have actually considered some form of almost lessening their such harsh ideology on them wastelanders in order to almost take in more of a an open view and as a result also recruit more people which is something they lacked heavily and we also saw in the ncr and brother seal war we saw that the brotherhood of steel's almost a lack of willing to take in others led to their downfall now this leads on to my next point, which is a little regard for the humans and a high isolationist group. Now the high isolationist group is basically following on from my previous point, the fact that their simple distrust of outsiders combined with their harsh ideology led to almost having giving them such a closed-minded outlook. And as a result, people not only wanted to harm them, but obviously wouldn't want to join them. And this further led to the fact that over time, their faction... It is rumoured they went into inbreeding, but this is never I've never actually seen this confirmed unless I'm just seeing the wrong places. But the faction itself simply wasn't really expanding, and as a result they started running out of manpower, and eventually in Fallout 3 the Brother of Steel was able to overcome them due to the fact that they simply didn't have the manpower the Brother of Steel had. In addition to this, we see the fact that this sort of attitude just simply brings every faction against them, with the NCR and the Brother of Steel both openly fighting against the Enclave. And it's likely the Legion would have done the same. In fact, pretty much every faction that had encountered them would likely have fought them, due to the fact they would most likely cause the death of them all, because they don't just simply change their ideology, just to continue and to set up the functioning government they originally had planned. In addition to this, we're going back to the almost a little regard for non-pure humans. That builds on the idea that they simply see others in such low or such low regard. And also, as I put... They see themselves as superior to the Wasteland. They obviously have sort of a view that the Enclave is the best faction, and they will basically do anything to almost assert that. They'll harm any other um, group they need to, and they also ex execute an entire group of intelligent death claws simply because they questioned them. Now, it simply shows the fact that they see themselves as highly superior and do not want to be questioned at any point. They almost have a dictatorship of a um, US-style democracy and don't fully understand the sort of aspects of 
government that the NCR, NCR policies see in, this, in a different light. What this leads to is almost a faction that is doomed to fail because they simply cannot adapt to a wasteland in which anyone will do anything to survive, and they simply couldn't see this attitude, and as a result we saw the gradual downfall from Fallout 2 to probably about 30 or so years later we eventually saw the complete, um, complete vanishment probably about 40 years later. Now that's basically going to wrap up this episode because unless I just keep rambling, I've made my thoughts and against. If they're different lengths, um, that's not saying I favour them in any sort of way. I try to be balanced. I'm just trying, trying to wrap up my points and not be too long with the video. If I've made any sort of mistakes in the law, apart from the dates where I sometimes mess up and you should forgive me for the dates and times, then let me know in the comments below and I'll either amend it in the video or amend it in the Instagram post. And I hope you enjoy this episode. I hope you enjoy the Instagram series and I hope you follow me on Instagram at Civil Fallout. And this has been Jamsack the Fallout Guy on why you should or should not join the Enclave. Thanks for watching.